After the ship was moved into deeper water, I went with the pinnace and yawl, manned and armed, and landed upon the island, accompanied by Mr. Banks and Dr. Solander. We had scarce landed before all the canoes left the ship and landed at different parts of the island, and before we could well look about us we were surrounded by two or three hundred people, and, notwithstanding that they were all armed, they came upon us in such a confused, straggling manner that we hardly suspected that they meant us any harm. But in this we were very soon undeceived, for upon our endeavouring to draw a line on the sand between us and them, they set up the war dance, and immediately some of them attempted to seize the two boats. Being disappointed in this, they next attempted to break in upon us, upon which I fired a musket loaded with small shot at one of the forwardest of them, and Mr. Banks and two of the men fired immediately after. This made them retire back a little, but in less than a minute one of the chiefs rallied them again. Dr. Solander, seeing this, gave him a peppering with small shot, which sent him off, and made them retire a second time. They attempted to rally several times after, and only seemed to want some one of resolution to head them. But they were at last entirely dispersed by the ship firing a few shot over their heads, and a musket now and then from us. In this skirmish, only one or two of them was hurt with small shot, for I avoided killing any one of them as much as possible, and for that reason withheld our people from firing. We had observed that some had hid themselves in a cave in one of the rocks, and some time after the hole was over we went towards them. The chief, who I have mentioned to have been on board the ship, happened to be one of these. He, his wife and another came out to meet us, but the rest made off. Those three people came and sat down by us, and we gave them of such things as we had about us. After this, we went to another part of the island, where some of the inhabitants came up to us and were as meek as lambs. Having taken a view of the bay from the island, and loaded both boats with celery, which we found here in great plenty, we returned on board, and at 4 a.m. hove up the anchor in order to put to sea, with a light breeze at east, but it soon falling calm obliged us to come to again, and about eight or nine o'clock, seeing no probability of our getting to sea, I sent the master to sound the harbour. But before this I ordered Matthew Cox, Henry Stevens, and Emmanuel Pereira to be punished with a dozen lashes each for leaving their duty when ashore last night and digging up potatoes out of one of the plantations. The first of the three I remitted back to confinement because he insisted that there was no harm in what he had done. All this forenoon had abundance of the natives about the ship and some few on board. We trafficked with them for a few trifles in which they dealt very fairly and friendly. Friday, 1st of December, 1769 Winds at north-northwest, a gentle breeze At 3 p.m., the boats having returned from sounding, I went with them over to the south side of the harbour and landed upon the main, accompanied by Mr. Banks and Dr. Solander. We met with nothing new or remarkable. The place where we landed was in a small sandy cove where there are two small streams of fresh water and plenty of wood for fuel. Here were likewise several little plantations planted with potatoes and yams. The soil and natural produce of the country was much the same as what we have hitherto met with. The people we saw behaved to us with great marks of friendship. In the evening we had some very heavy showers of rain, and this brought us on board sooner than we intended. A.M., the wind being still contrary, I sent some people ashore upon the island to cut grass for our sheep, in the doing of which the inhabitants gave them no sort of disturbance, and in the same friendly manner did those behave that were alongside the ship. Punished Matthew Cox with six lashes, and then dismissed him. Saturday 2nd, winds at north-west and north. 
p.m. a gentle breeze, the remainder strong gales and hazy, with much rain towards noon. At 8 a.m. hoisted out the longboat and sent her ashore for water, and the pinnace to haul the seine. But they had not got well ashore before it began to blow and rain very hard. This occasioned them to return on board with one turn of water and but a very few fish. Sunday 3rd. P.M. Strong gales at north with rain. The remainder gentle breezes from the westward. A.M. Sent two boats to sound the harbour, and one to haul the seine, the latter of which met with very little success. Monday 4th. Gentle breezes at northwest, west northwest, and west. Very fair weather. P.M. Mr. Banks, Dr. Solander, and myself landed upon one of the islands on the north side of the one that the ship lays under. This island is about three miles in circuit and hath upon it forty or fifty acres of land cultivated and planted with roots. Here are likewise several small streams of excellent water. This island, as well as most others in this bay, seem to be well inhabited. At 4 a.m. sent the longboat to the above island for water and some hands to cut grass, and at nine I went with the pinnace and yawl over upon the main, accompanied by Mr. Banks and Dr. Solander. In our way we passed by a point of land on which stood a hipper, or fortified village, the inhabitants of which waved us to come ashore, and accordingly we landed, which we had no sooner done then the people came about us with quantities of various sorts of fish, which we purchased of them for mere trifles. After this they showed us the village, which was a neat, compact place, and its situation well chosen. There were two or three more near unto this, but these we did not go to. We afterwards went a little way into the country, and had some of the natives along with us, we met with a good deal of cultivated land, planted mostly with sweet potatoes. The face of the country appeared green and pleasant, and the soil seemed to be pretty rich and proper for cultivation. The land is everywhere about this bay of a moderate height, but full of small hills and valleys, and not much encumbered with wood. We met with about half a dozen cloth plants, being the same as the inhabitants of the islands lying within the tropics make their finest cloth on. This plant must be very scarce among them, as the cloth made from it is only worn in small pieces by way of ornaments at their ears, and even this we have seen very seldom. Their knowing the use of this sort of cloth doth in some measure account for the extraordinary fondness they have showed for it above every other thing we had to give them. Even a sheet of white paper is of more value than so much English cloth of any sort whatever. But, as we have been at few places where I have not given away more or less of the latter, it's more than probable that they will soon learn to set a value upon it, and likewise upon iron, a thing not one of them knows the use of or sets the least value upon. But were European commodities in ever such esteem among them, they have no one thing of equal value to give in return, at least that we have seen. Tuesday 5th, p.m. had the winds at south-west and west-south-west, a fresh breeze. At three o'clock we returned on board, and after dinner visited another part of the bay, but met with nothing new. By the evening all our empty casks were filled with water, and had at the same time got on board a large quantity of celery, which is found here in great plenty. This I still cause to be boiled every morning with oatmeal and portable soup for the ship's company's breakfast. At 4 a.m. weighed with a light breeze at southeast, but had variable light airs and sometimes calm until near noon when a gentle breeze sprang up at north. At this time we had not got out of the bay, our latitude by observation was 35 degrees 9 minutes south. This bay, I have before observed, 
lies on the west side of Cape Brett. I have named it the Bay of Islands on account of the great number which line its shores, and these help to form several safe and commodious harbours, wherein is room and depth of water sufficient for any number of shipping. The one we lay in is on the southwest side of the southwestermost island that lies on the southeast side of the bay. I have made no accurate survey of this bay. The time it would have required to have done this discouraged me from attempting it. Besides, I thought it quite sufficient to be able to affirm with certainty that it affords a good anchorage and every kind of refreshment for shipping. But as this was not the season for roots, we got only fish. Some few we caught ourselves with hook and line and in the seine, but by far the greatest part we purchased of the natives, and these of various sorts, such as sharks, stingrays, breams, mullet, mackerel, and several other sorts. Their way of catching them is the same as ours, with hook and line and seines. Of the last, they have some prodigious large, made all of a strong kind of grass. The mackerel are in every respect the same as those we have in England, only some are larger than any I ever saw in any other part of the world. Although this is the season for this fish, we have never been able to catch one with hook and line. The inhabitants of this bay are far more numerous than at any other place we have yet been in, and seem to live in friendship one with another, although it doth not at all appear that they are united under one head. They inhabited both the islands and the main, and have a number of hippers or strongholds, and these are all built in such places as nature hath in a great part fortified, and what she hath left undone the people themselves have finished. It is high water in this bay at full and change of the moon about eight o'clock, and the tide at these times rises and falls upon a perpendicular six or eight feet. It appears from the few observations I have been able to make of the tides on the sea coast that the flood comes from the southward, and I have lately had reasons to think that there is a current which comes from the westward and sets along shore to the south-east or south-south-east as the land lays. Wednesday 6. P.M. had a gentle breeze at north-north-west, with which we kept turning out of the bay, but gained little or nothing. In the evening it fell little wind. At ten o'clock it was calm. At this time the tide or current setting the ship near one of the islands, where we were very near ashore. But by the help of our boats and a light air from the southward we got clear. About an hour after, when we thought ourselves out of all danger, the ship struck upon a sunken rock and went immediately clear without receiving any perceptible damage. Just before, the man in the chains had seventeen fathoms water, and immediately after she struck, five fathoms, but very soon deepened to twenty. This rock lies half a mile west-northwest from the northernmost or outermost island that lies on the southeast side of the bay. Had light airs from the land, and sometimes calm until nine o'clock a.m., at this time we had got out of the bay, and a breeze springing up at north-northwest we stood out to sea. At noon Cape Brett bore south-south-east half-south, distant ten miles. Latitude observed, 34 degrees 59 minutes south.